Hello, welcome back. This is lesson four, part one of sixth grade oceans and atmosphere and climate unit. I'm excited for today's lesson because we're going to try to answer the question of how the ocean might affect what's happening in Christchurch during El Nino years. So today's title is called The Ocean in Motion. To help you be really successful with today's lesson, you're going to need to gather the following things. You'll need a notebook and a pen or just some paper to write on. And it really helps to have someone to talk to. The science that we're going to be doing in this lesson requires some deep thinking. And having someone to bounce your ideas off of just makes your thinking grow a little bit deeper. And I'll be here to help you with that as much as I can. But having someone else there to talk to makes it so much better. Okay, so let's get started. One of the things that we learned in the last lesson was about how the word latitude means the distance from the equator. So if you are far from the equator, you have a high latitude, and that would be what it is up in the North Pole or down in the South Pole, very far away from the equator. The equator is represented by this black line that is going down the middle of the Earth. And in this picture, you can see that the colors are kind of changing. And this is showing over the course of a year the temperature that you might see in different parts of the planet. The map that we looked at in Lesson 3 was static, which is just a word that means it stayed still. So I found this graphic because I thought you might find it's interesting that at some times of the year, the temperature might be warmer or might be colder. One of the things that you learned as a student climatologist is that the, the distance that a location is from the equator, the more energy it gets from the sun. So a location that's very close to the equator is going to get a lot more energy than a location that's further away. The thing that we are trying to understand is how come the, the location isn't changing, but the temperature is. So Christchurch air temperature and ocean surface temperature both become cooler during El Nino years. But we, we know that the city's latitude is not changing. So what else might affect the location's air temperature? We can see from this graph that we looked at during our last lesson that the amount of energy that Christchurch, New Zealand is getting during an El Nino year and a normal year is the same. So this is the investigation question that we're going to try to understand today, which is that other than latitude, what else affects ocean surface temperature? So to do this, we're going to read an article called The Ocean in Motion. And this is an article that Kitty Parada from the New Zealand Farm Council set, sent to us just to help us understand a little bit more about oceans. Um, from the title, I see that it's called The Ocean in Motion, so I'm interested in that. Okay, let's take a look at this picture that's at the top of the article in just a little bit more detail. If we look at this picture here, it looks like people are picking up shoes from the beach. I think that um, I see a lot of shoes on this beach. I don't know if I've ever been to a beach that had quite so many shoes on it. But um, it looks like they were in the ocean. Um, why would they be in the ocean in the first place? That's something that I wonder about. And how did they get to the shore? The title of the article is called The Ocean in Motion, so that kind of makes me think that the explanation for these shoes um, might be somehow connected with the movement or motion that's happening inside the ocean. I've noticed when I go to the beach that the water comes in and sort of like hits the shore and it seems like it's moving around, so maybe that's something to do with it. So there's two different ways that you can get the article. The first thing you could do is you could go on to your Amplify Science account and then go from, go to the menu, choose the library, and then choose the Oceans, Atmosphere, and Climate unit. And then once you have that, choose the article, The Ocean in Motion. Another way that you can get a copy of this article is by going to this website, seattleschools.org slash academics slash curriculum slash science. So if you want to pause the video to write that down, you can get the article from there. Once you are on this page, scroll down until you get to middle school, and then you can download the lesson four packet from the Oceans, Atmosphere, and Climate Unit. So I'm going to go ahead and read part of the article, and um, then you can open up the article either from the packet or 
from Amplify Science and read it on your own. But let's read the first paragraph together before we do that. Okay, I've opened the article and here it is. You can see the same picture we just looked at. The caption of this picture says, thousands of shoes fell off the ship that was carrying them across the ocean. Oh, that's how they got in there. Fell off a ship. Okay, eventually some of those shoes washed up on this beach. People collected them and tried to find matched pairs. Free shoes! There's so many. I wonder how that looks like a pair right there. Right there. Okay, let's keep reading. Surprising things sometimes wash up on shore, and this can happen all over the world. During a powerful storm in 1990, containers packed with 61,000 shoes fell off a cargo ship traveling across the Pacific Ocean and eventually washed up on beaches in Oregon, Hawaii, and Japan. Okay, let me pause there for just a minute. When I read that the shoes washed up on beaches in Oregon, Hawaii, and Japan, the first question I thought of is how? Okay, but I want to dig a little bit more deeply and not just say how, but instead say, how could three locations so far away all end up with shoes from the same ship? That's really, that's a little bit mind blowing almost. Okay, let's read the next paragraph or the next part of the paragraph. These locations are hundreds or thousands of miles away from the place where the shoes were spilled. How did the shoes make their way to those, to these locations? One of the things, one of the things that scientists do as they read is they take notes to try to understand what they're reading. And Kitty Parada has sent this article to us because she believes that the information in this is going to help us answer the question about El Nino and how it affects the air temperature in Christchurch, New Zealand. So far, this doesn't really seem connected, but writing notes as we go through the article is going to help us understand what the connection is between this article and the problem that we're trying to solve. So to take notes, if you're using the online version, you just highlight stuff and then you can add a note. So I, before I do that though, I'm just gonna highlight Oregon, Hawaii, and Japan. And, oops, I'm gonna highlight it, but I'm also going to leave a note. So my note is just gonna say how not just how, but to think more deeply, I'm going to, to try to say, I wonder how the shoes got to these three different locations. So if you have your article on paper and you want to write a question like that while I'm typing, or if you want to write it by hand, if you have the packet. Okay, so how, how did these shoes get to these locations? And I'm adding exclamation points because I really want to know the answer to this question. It's baffling. Okay, so I'll save that and you'll see there's this little icon over here. And if you click on, you can see your notes. If you're, if you're using a paper copy of this, it doesn't matter that it does those fancy tricks online. The same notes, the same kind of annotations work just fine. Okay, so what we're going to do right now for this section of the video is I'm going to keep reading the article in the next part of the video. So if you want to just hang out with me on this video and read with me, that's totally fine. If you have a paper copy and or an online copy and you still want to follow along, that's okay. If you would rather read it on your own and not listen to me reading it, then you can, um, you can do that and then just come back and join us as soon as you're done. Okay, one last thing I wanna say is if you choose to not read it with me, absolutely fine, but I would really encourage you to find someone with whom you can read the article. If you have someone to talk to while you're reading it, it will help you notice some things because you will sort of force yourself to think more deeply. Like how when I saw that first thing about the three locations, my mind just thought, how? But I had to put into words so that I could explain it to you what I was thinking. And so by doing that, it actually made my mind think a little bit more deeply about the topic. So I would encourage you to do that.